<laughs> I did it again. It got to 444 and I had forgotten to do the sound check. I've been so engrossed in thinking about what I'm going to be talking about today. <laughs> I forgot completely the sound check. I did just light the candles a, a minute before that, just a little bit before. I'm learning. Not, I used to light them like 10 minutes before, but then my candles were burning down too fast. So now I light them just before I start. <laughs> anyway, good morning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, let's just give the title and, and jump into it this morning. <laughs> Satan, our adversary, within or without? For millennia, the human race has been caught up in the matrix of the good versus evil duel. One of my friends from California named William sent me an interesting email about Satan. I'm not sure if he wrote it, but this is what he said. Quote, Satan is that voice inside most people that says, you can't. <laughs> Satan is our own self-doubt, fear, and illusion. If you listen to Satan, guess what happens to you? You live in hell, and you don't have to die to get there. Religion took it literally when it was only meant to be taken figuratively. You know what the word Satan means? Adversary. And for most people, their biggest adversary is themselves. They externalize this evil. And it's no wonder people have such a hard time in their healing. They're trying to fight with something they believe to be outside when it's really within. Wow. When I came to the computer this morning and was checking through my emails and I came up on that one, it was actually posted in the Galactic Free Press, which is one of the well over a hundred groups that, that I belong to. That I've been added to, I thought, well, I, I don't need to go any further than that. I mean, it just it caught my attention. And the truth of the matter is, most of the group emails that I get get deleted fairly quickly. Uh, there's no point for me to read a lot of them because they have nothing to do with me, or at least most of the time. And it depends how much time I spend depends on how much time I have. But in any case, when th this one just grabbed my attention. And so I went to William's uh, Facebook page and saw that actually someone else posted it. Let me just look at that a minute. Uh, Aunt Andrea actually posted it on his wall, so maybe she was the one that said it. Um, in any case, as I said, this grabbed my attention because something that has been going on with me is this whole Rusa religion thing uh, that I sort of talked about yesterday, uh, God fighting God, or the God battle, the God war. And somebody that I know in the Republic who doesn't like the idea that they're trying to Christianize the Republic is on the fence now becoming convinced that if we don't put up Christian barriers in Rusa the Muslims are going to come in and take over and that is a huge fear of many people, Christians and non-Christians in this country because Muslims have been demonized the same way people that aren't Muslims have been demonized in the uh, external world. In other words, Muslims are demonized in the Western world, in America especially, in the United States and Canada and uh, North America especially, and becoming demonized more and more in Europe. 
And there's all sorts of warnings about people thinking that Muslims are going to be the, the, the demons. They demonize Muslims. And in the Muslim community, non-Muslims get demonized as the great Satan. The United States is seen as the great Satan to Muslim people. And this all stems from the fact that we have been fed this bill of goods that goes back to the founding of Western religions, anyway, Judeo-Christian Muslim faiths, where the whole of the world is depicted, the whole of the world experience is depicted as this huge battle between this very powerful satanic Luciferian figure and God. And God is on the short end of the stick because even in the Bible it tells us that Satan is the God of this world. Satan is the one that as a roaring lion seek, uh, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And we're told to be sober and vigilant because of that. That's the Bible, folks. That's our Islamic and our Christian faiths. Bread molded by this polarized conflict between good and evil. And what William and Andrea shared on Facebook and with the Galactic Free Press, I mean, it gives me something to ponder. Because yes, I've read the myths. I was raised as a fundamentalist Christian. And Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now the prince of this world is cast out. Ah, see, the prince of this world is cast out. Hmm. The illuminated one, Lucifer, the bright, the bright star, the brightest of the angels, the fallen angels. We all have heard the myths if we've spent any time studying, haven't we? Angels and Demons, that wonderful book about the Vatican. That was the Da Vinci Code author. Was it Tom, was it Tom Brown? I mean, I'm thinking that's what it was, but I might be wrong. In any case, this myth, this story that we've been told about this great adversary has infiltrated our minds to the point where literally we create hell on earth. Always looking outside of ourselves for that great adversary when those of us that become a little wiser realize that everything is inside of us. It's not out there. It's in here. And if I think it's out there and I don't recognize that it's in here, in here, really, in here, it's in my head, it's in my mind, if I don't recognize that this is where the mind control takes place and I'm trying to destroy the mind control out there when it's not out there, well, yeah, it is out there because we've put, we've created it out there too. And because we, whether there's fallen angels or not, one thing I think I can be fairly certain of is that there are fallen humans. <laughs> and sometimes they seem to be in control, don't they? But what if it is all inside? What if that is true? What if the psychology of this whole thing tells us that we can't see anything out there unless it's in here? Unless it's in us, we can't perceive it outside of us. And what if that which we've put out there, as I said yesterday, what if it's a gift to help us to turn our focus inward? What we're pointing at out there, whether it's the Muslims or the Christians, the fundamentalists or whatever. If we're pointing the finger out there, there's three fingers pointing back at me. It's 
true of you too. Whatever you're going to point at as the problem, and if you're not going to take responsibility for it, you're creating a polarization. You're al and you're allowing that polarization to create your experience. Hell on earth. The adversary is us. I am my own worst enemy. You've heard it said. And I've come to believe it's true. And that's a belief too. I am my own worst enemy. Because I don't think I'm good enough. Because I don't think anything is real. I think I'm weak. I think this and, and that. That are beliefs. Beliefs. I need to reprogram my mind with the idea that Creator God is bigger than all of the Satans we have created in our external world, whether visible or invisible in our external world, whether mythological or not. It's all consciousness. It's all thought. It's all thought. I believe less and less and less in the myth of this great adversary. Do I believe in angels? Yeah, I do. I think of them more in terms of extraterrestrials <laughs> than I do seraphim and cherubim and etc. Although I don't discount the other as a possibility. I believe in fairies and elves and things like that too. Not that I go around talking about it. I believe it's possible. I believe lots of things are possible. Because we have such powerful minds and we can create with thoughts. And thought forms become things. Thoughts become things. I'm sharing this with you today and I'm hoping that as I'm starting to see I think more truly the nature of the beast and the beast is our thoughts it's our own ignorance it's our own conjured up fantasy to explain the world that we live in to explain our lives and to pass the buck to find the scapegoat that will take away our sin and our pain and our suffering. To find the scapegoat somewhere out there and bind that scapegoat and imprison it so that it can't do that anymore. I'm telling you, if we get it, that the scapegoat is part of our own being. Our, our demon is that part of our shadow self that we refuse to look at and ref refuse to love and refuse to own. As long as we keep it out there, we're going to keep polarizing. We're going to keep creating the world that we've lived in and that we live in. Yeah, lived in. I'd like it to be the world that we lived in. And we look back and we laugh at ourselves. We laugh at ourselves. Because look what we did to ourselves by our beliefs. We believed we were separate. We believed there must be some force that caused us to hurt so badly. And so we created a myth, a legend, because we didn't know who we were. We didn't remember. And we needed some kind of an excuse, something to, or someone to blame. It's all psychology, folks. A word about the soul. And the greatest revelation you and I are ever going to have is that the Redeemer, just as the adversary is within, so is the Redeemer, so is the Christ, so is the Savior. It's within us, always has been, just as the adversary always has been something within our own being. We are consciousness itself experiencing itself and that itself is the creator 
and behind it all is the great creator. Is that also just a myth? <laughs> I don't think so, but who knows? We've been so wrapped up in our myths that it's hard to recognize the truth that is right in front of us. I leave you with these thoughts this morning, and I thank you again for listening. Namaste.